Hello, good evening, students. Good evening. Good. Uh, I hope you've got the link. I sent it earlier on yesterday, but it looks as if uh, most of you couldn't have access to it, so I resend it today. So the link is open now. Inform your colleagues who are not here to join. By the way, is group 12 ready for their presentation? Group 12. Group 13. Doc, group 13, we are here. Share your slide. Frederick. Yes, Linda. Yes, is, uh, please. Is Addison connected already? Yes. No, he's not. You can start. Let me try call, to call him. Okay, all right. Okay, group 13, you have 20 minutes to do your presentation. The time is 6.16. So can you go ahead and start your presentation, please? Okay, thank you, Doc. Good evening, Doc, good evening, class. This is group 13. We are doing our presentation on strategic decision-making for genetic and SWOT analysis for Microsoft companies. I'm the group leader, Frederick Anunkote. Presenting with me is Joseph Addison and Linda Adebasa. We start with case one, Genentech. Uh, this is just a brief background on the Genentech company based upon the case study and then a few research from the website. It's a biotechnology company founded in 1976. It's been a leader in the biotechnology company and has won several awards. It manufactures protein-based drugs and autoimmune drugs for diseases like lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, sclerosis, etc. In 2006, it was able to build sales up to nine, 9 billion US dollars and in 2006, it yielded a profit of two billion dollars. We look deeper into the genetic case as per the case study. But the case study, it was established that in, tw in 2007, it had a drop in sales and then fall in stock prices. Therefore, there was a reactive strategic approach in place that centered on strategic issues like the challenge to target autoimmune drug. And then it was also centered around how to win market competition because they had competitors like Amgen, Novartis, and then competitors in the market or existing drugs in the market 
were not giving lasting solutions. So it was also centered on how to have an effective medication. And finally, it was also concerned with how to commit resources into this reactive strategic approach. Therefore, this brings us to the um, highlighting or the explanation of strategic decision. In a summary, we say strategic decisions are responses to strategic issues that direct the competitiveness of a firm in the industry. As all of us know, as organizations grow and become bigger, there will be changes in decision making because of uncertainty and complexity in our environment. Therefore, it is very relevant that when we are taking decisions, there has to be certain futures or characteristics. That means decision taking has to be rare. That is where they are exceptional and vital to an organization in terms of long-term objectives. And they are also consequential in terms of resources that has to be committed into it. And strategic decisions also has to be directive. That means they become the precedent and then an example for smaller and upcoming decisions for an organization in the future. In light of this, we look at this part of the slide where we want to evaluate the mode of decision-making of the CEO of Atta Levinson. Therefore, according to Henry Minsbeth, he came out with the approaches of strategic decision-making, which is entrepreneurial, adaptive, and planning. And there was a fourth one that was pro propounded by Quinn, which is logical incrementalism. Therefore, as per the diagram on the, on the left, you can see the relationship between them. We will dive deeper to explain how these approaches of decision-making affected the decision-making of Genentech. So entrepreneurial mode. The entrepreneurial, the entrepreneurial mode deals with um, inspiration of changes and then innovation. And this is characterized by vision and then bold decision. And it has the future of speed. So when we link this entrepreneurial mode of decision making with the case study, we see that the CEO faced with the declining sales growth and then diminishing stock prices found it very important to link the company to solutions that will prepare it for gaining further revenue or to make profits. So therefore, in a move typical of the entrepreneurial mode pro propounded by Minsbet, Atta Levinson made a bold decision to take the company in a different direction based on his own vision where the company could be. The adaptive mode is a mode that reacts to problems in an organization and then offer solutions that yields in fragmented strategy. So typical of the adaptive mode, at a Levinson board strategic decision to commit resources to this new area was based on a report from a British physician that the Genentech's cancer drug reduced and eased the agony of rheumatoid arthritis in five of his patients. Therefore, we see reactive strategic approach here in place. That means he was reacting to a solution for an existing problem to get revenue for the company. We enter to the planning mode, which deals with systematic situation analysis where appropriate strategies are developed and selected to ensure that the strategy for going into this new field was not fragmented and uncoordinated. The CEO we, in a move which was typical of the planning mode described by Minsbeth brought the board of directors on board and immediately orchestrated a full research program to retuzan in autoimmune disease. So we can see that by activating the research program, the CEO ensured that adequate situational analysis was guarded in a systematic way. Logical incrementalism. For logical incrementalism, it's a synthesis of the three approaches and it offers an interactive probing of the future. And it is very useful for uncertain environments, just like the environment that Genentech found itself. So in summary, we can say that strategic decision-making of Atta Levinson corresponded to the characteristics of logical incrementalism in such a way that by his calculated actions, 
He showed a synthesis of both the entrepreneurial mode, adaptive mode, and the planning mode. And ultimately, it became an interactive process for investigating into the opportunities. Therefore, in view of this, we can say that the strategic decision making of Atta Levinson can be viewed as a very good and safe decision making strategy. In light of this, we would like to advise CEO Atta Levinson on a more analytical and then a more approach, a more analytical and then a more appropriate way of decision making within an organization with respect to his case. So we advise him with a step to first define the problem. In this way of defining the problem, we come to the focus area where he has to evaluate the situation or the current situation at stake. And in these areas, he has to look at the profitability. Therefore, a decision that he's taking for the company, he has to consider whether it will generate a revenue, whether it can bring a market share. He must also look at his resources in terms of core competencies, whether he can have distinctive competencies and then finance and then other assets that can enhance into the success of the decision making for objectives. It also has to correspond to his missions and then objectives for the organization. So the next step that we can also advise him also for is to gather information. And to gather information, at a level, he must assess his corporate governance. In assessing corporate governance in organization, top managers alone do not take decision, but decision-making, implementation, control, and evaluation has to be a concern of all the people within the organization or all stakeholders. Therefore, he has to do an assessment and discuss and then pass it through all those channels for everyone to be in consensus. And in also gathering information, he has to assess his external environment in terms of his opportunities and then threats. In the case of Genentech, they had the opportunity to target autoimmune disease drugs and then a research into Rituzan medicine. And should it be successful, they will be able to have competition and then market share. And they also had a threat whereby, should it fail, it will be consequential to affect the ailment of um, patients. And then they can also lose resources should the decision making to research into that drug also fail. And he, has, he also has to assess his internal environment. Internal environment in the sense of strengths and then weaknesses. For his strengths, they were having 1,000 researchers and then they could have developed their capabilities through maybe acquisitions or through training and then development, et cetera. And then they were also having a weaknesses whereby they have formally failed in the research of that drug, or let's say to come out with autoimmune drugs in the market before. So all these assessments were very important for, for him to consider. In the next step, we also advise him to develop and then evaluate his options. In that way, he has to assess his strategic factors. He can assess strategic factors in, in the sense that he can enter into mega and acquisition in case he doesn't have the capabilities to research into the autoimmune medicine. So he can go by mega and acquisition. He can also organize a research program as he authorized the board of directors to support that decision. He can also have training and development for his researchers of 1,000 researchers so that they can come up with distinctive uh, competencies so that they can be more competitive should they come up with a drug so that they will be successful. In, in light of that, they can also consider having expert recruitment or to enter into strategic alliances with other companies. Um, next, he can also make a decision or choose a best strategy from the options that have been given. And if a strategy is chosen and that is to be implemented, he must ensure that he passes through change management because for every new strategy, for, for every new change, you encounter a re resistance to change. And every strategy you want to implement, you must make sure you have the budget allocations that will cover it. And finally, you have to do evaluation of it in terms of checking the direction, the progress, and then the deviation of the strategy in terms of objectives. 
So I will end here and my colleague Addison will take us through the SWOT analysis for Microsoft. Thank you. Addison, you can take over. Thank you very much, Frederick. My name is Joseph Addison and I'll be taking you through the SWOT analysis for Microsoft. But firstly, we want to do a brief overview of Microsoft. Now, Microsoft is an international software company founded in 1975 by owner Bill Gates and Paul Allen. It currently has its headquarters in Redmond, USA and has as a current CEO's name, Satya Nadella, who is a guru in internet clouding and artificial intelligence. In 2018, it made an annual revenue of over 100 billion, and that generated into a profit of 72 billion. Some of the products of Microsoft are Cortana, Docs.com, Microsoft Office, Microsoft Office 365, just to mention a few. Now, some of the competitors of Microsoft also are Apple, Google, and Oracle. Now, we say Microsoft is a hyper-competitive firm because it uses strategy, that is tactics, to disrupt competition held by eight market leaders. Just as it was said in the passage by owner Bill Gates, he said, scale is not all positive in this business. Cleverness is the position in this business. Next slide. Yes, now we look at the SWOT analysis for Microsoft. We're going to look at the strengths, the weakness, the opportunities, and the threat. Now, it is important to note that the strengths and weakness are internal taxes that are generated, are done within the firm to give them competitive edge or advantage over eight competitors. While the opportunities and threats are external taxes that they can adapt to change their competitive uh, advantage in making sure that they gain more market share. So we start and we take them one by one, starting with the strength. Next slide, please. And for the strength, we are, because of time, we only pick some few salient points that we want to talk about. So we start with brand loyalty. Uh, now, even in this meeting that we are using, we are now, uh, our lecture dog asked all of us to put all our presentation in PowerPoints. And that even is one way that we can say that Microsoft has a very strong brand loyalty all around the world, even in Africa. Then we move on to reputable brand. Now, it is said in Forbes, that Microsoft is the seventh most reputable brand in the world. And if Forbes, which is also a very reputable institution in the world, has said that, then you know that it is true. Then we move on to easy to use software. Yeah, even right here in Africa, Microsoft Office, Excel, PowerPoint, all of them are very easy to use as compared to products from Apple and Oracle. And therefore we say that one of the strengths is that it's a very easy to use software. Then we move on to acquisition of Skype. And then in Skype, we can say that they bought into Skype and they nearly made $300 million. Now, that's not only the one they bought. They also bought into LinkedIn for business users, and that also made them a lot of money. Now we move on to their weaknesses. Next page, please. Now, for weaknesses, we say poor acquisition and investment. Yes, although they, Microsoft bought into Skype and LinkedIn, somewhere in 2016, they also made another investment into Nokia for imported $7.6 billion. And, but it didn't really go so well. So the following year, they had to sell it off to a Chinese Indian firm for $7.2 billion. And that made them a loss of almost $400 million. And we say that was a very bad investment on their part. Then we move on to perception of security flaws. And we say that everybody who uses this uh, Microsoft Office products. From time to time, you have to be constantly updating your virus because there's always you virus. You have six minutes more to go. Okay, so there's always antivirus that you have to be constantly updating your antivirus. And because of that, we use the word perception too because it might be a plan or a tactic that Microsoft is using because they can make a little money on the side by you always purchasing their updated antivirus. Then we move on to dependence on hardware manufacturers. And then we say that dependence on hardware manufacturers, because Microsoft is focusing so much on its software, it is not really giving a good attention to their hardware, and that can be a weakness on its part. And we have lack of market leadership in the internet browsing space. Now, Google, Mozilla, Firefox, and Chrome have already taken the lead, and Microsoft Edge is not really doing well. Last but not least, we have cybercrime. Now, because it is easy for people to use their Microsoft uh, software, we have all these internet fraudsters who are also on it and using their software to perpetrate a lot of crime. That, can, that is also a big weakness on their part. Now, that being said, we can say for competitiveness, Microsoft must take advantage of its strength to overcome its weakness. The next slide, please. 
we also look at it opportunities and we say first one is the cloud-based services now because their current ceo satya nadella is a guru in internet cloud and that is a very big opportunity for him because he can start now making sure that with his expertise that he has gained over the years, he pushes them to the right direction for them to gain even a greater market share. Then we move on to mobile advertising. A lot of these are youth these days are, move, are no more using the, the table desktops and the laptop, but they are switching to uh, portable devices and smartphones. And if Microsoft could take advantage and move on to that platform, they would also make a lot of money. So that's a big opportunity for them. Then we have growth through acquisition. Yes, although they have LinkedIn and they have Skype, if they could also buy to WhatsApp or TikTok or Viber, they would also make them a lot of money. And also we have innovation and artificial intelligence. Every home in the world has a home appliance in one way or another. That is a, a TV, a fridge, a ref an air conditioner, and all these things are being turned to AI technology now. So if Microsoft could take opportunity and make sure it branches into that area, it will capture the whole world. And then we move on lastly to, next slide please, to their threat. And for the threat, we are saying that one is open source software. Now, nowadays, when the, with this current COVID-19 that came, most of people were home and they are watching their movies and series on Showmax and Netflix and all, and that made it even cheaper instead of going to the normal process that they do things. So Microsoft would be very wary of that and if possible, try to buy into those things. Other than that, they would make a loss and would be a threat to them. Now we also have changing preference of customers. Now most customers, as we said earlier, are switching to their smartphones and notepads instead of their laptops. And if Microsoft doesn't take care and branch into those areas, he can really lose a lot of market share. We have cyber crime and piracy. And for that, we say that because it's also easy for everybody to use their software, Criminals are also using their platform to perpetrate a lot of crime, and that is a big threat on their part. I would like to end here, and I'll hand over to my colleague, Linda, to take us through the rest. Thank you. Hello, Linda. Hello, good evening, Dr. Linda, you have three minutes more to go. My name is Linda Divas. I'm taking you through the recommendation. And then uh, Microsoft should improve its software browser to a level where it can challenge established browsers like the Google Chrome, Safari, Mozilla, Firefox, and others. And also, um, it is recommended that the company continue to adapt effective marketing tools to enhance its brand identity. And then Microsoft should also ensure consistent innovations and upgrade its software lines. Uh, another one too is there should the, there is a perception that Microsoft's platform is not a source, it's not as sec, uh, secure as other compare uh, the competing platforms. Therefore, the company that is Microsoft can do itself a lot of good by resolving cyber crime securities, and then also um, um, from other threats that customers may be wary of in order to improve trust in the Microsoft platform. The next slide, please. Microsoft can remain a market leader in software products by making the right partnership and strategic alliances, and then also reduce profit margins on apps to remain competitive. That is in in a world where open source software are free and flooding the market, selling softwares by huge prices is unsustainable practice. And then also, the next slide, please. Hello. Uh -huh. And also, Microsoft should tackle privacy-related concern on the Microsoft platform. And then they should also target greater competition with market leaders like Google and Apple. Microsoft can also diversify its business to improve its competitiveness. And the last but not the least, they should make strategic acquisitions. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Group 13. The floor is now open for questions from the group member, uh, the class. Yes, um, and your analysis that you've done with the presentation, Microsoft has a strategy 
the class. All right, uh, you don't have any question. Uh, let me interrogate the group members. Uh, group 13, in course of your advice to the CEO of Genetec, you made some recommendations and those recommendations I need you to expatiate on some of them. You made mention of expert recruitment. What do you mean by expert recruitment? Okay, thank you, Doc. Yes, um, in, in light of Genentech having 1,000 researchers, it can be that in the past, before we came to this case, for about 30 or 31 years, it was into bi biotechnology medicines for clone genes, for protein drugs. And suddenly, end of 2006 into early 2007, they had this drop in sales or falling markets. Well, uh, this can be analyzed from both internal and then external factors in the sense that it can be that maybe their products were not meeting quality in the market again, despite the researchers that they have. So in light of the new venture into the autoimmune drug, in order to ensure competitiveness and also to ensure that they can get a lasting medicine due to their previous history that further former successes or former attempts from them to venture into the autoimmune drug disease formally they failed, but then after the uh, insight from the British physician, they now decided to research more into that. So there can be the case that if their researchers don't have the competencies or the capabilities for their internal strength, we can do um, expert recruitment, or we can also go through mega an acquisition of a different firm who has that uh, competency so that they will be able to cover their threat with that. Hello, Doc. So, yes. so what did the expert, this thing that you are talking about? The expert recruitment. That's what I'm asking. Yes, expert recruitment lies to uh, recruit researchers who, let's say, have the expertise in researching deeper into into effective medication for autoimmune disease. Because uh, almost all these uh, researchers that they have, they are experts in their area. So I don't know whether you are talking about poaching, other highly, I mean, um, experts in the area of autoimmune disease, whether you, that's what we are trying to say. Yes, please. Yes, please. Yeah, but why were you beating around the bush and go, not go straight to the point? The first uh, person who answered the question. Okay. Hello, Doug, please. I was about to add to that because I wanted to make also the comparison just like uh, Microsoft. When this AI technology started, they just went and they put such a Satya, who is also a guru in AI. So in the same way, we're saying that Genentech should also poach people like that. You know, I was about to say that, but you started talking, so I had to wait for you to finish. You also made mention of um, evaluation of the plan. What do you mean by that? The I didn't hear the question. Evaluation. In course of uh, uh, one of your colleagues' uh, submission, he said that there is a need for evaluation of the plan. I want you to expatiate that. What does it mean by that? What should Genetec do by that evaluation that he's talking about? Did you mention evaluation? Yes, Doc. Yes, Doc. Yeah. Doc. Fred, yeah. can you scroll to that slide so that we see it?
Yes, Doc. Yeah, we have to do evaluation because when you make a strategic decision, you have to um, monitor and then see whether the strategic decision, the action plan that you are taking is conforming to objectives of the organization. When would that be done? When? After implementation. Uh, I mean, implement, after implementation, if you say after implementation, let's say it's a five-year strategic plan. Should we wait for the five year to elapse before we do the evaluation? When you implement, in, it will not end uh, for the end of time, but as soon as you implement, it becomes a continual program, a continuous process or continuous improvement process. Mm -mm. You are not, not speaking like a strategist. You are expert in the area. The way you are explaining the evaluation is not, I mean, uh, concrete. You have a plan. You have a five-year plan. You remember we talked in the class when we uh, explained that the strategic implementation and also management of it. You don't wait to the five-year period or the duration of the strategy comes to an end. It's a periodic issue. It can be annual review where you have to assess the performance of the strategies that you put in place. If they are not working, you have every right to be able to modify, to make sure that you disrupt. And this is another area of hyper-competitive company, all right? In the sense that, like Microsoft, you need to put in place some measures to disrupt the whole hot strategy of the leading or the competitor. If you realize uh, Novartis is rubbing shoulders with genetic, okay, with some of the drugs that they produce. So it means that periodically, not the, the way you are saying that they are, uh, they are implementation, implementation, we are talking about timeline, okay? Timeline, so if you are drawing strategic plan, you need to look at your timeline and have it, uh, that's why some people have short term, okay, medium term, and long term, okay? With all these, you need to be able to strategize to see how your plan is working by evaluating it. And that is where some companies will go for retreat, annual retreat to look at how they are performing, which you couldn't explain to my satisfaction. Okay, time is running. What do you understand by hyper-competitive uh, company or hyper-competition? Please scroll to that place, please. Hello, sir. Yeah, we are saying that a hyper-competitive firm is a firm that uses a strategy or tactics to disrupt competition held by the market leaders. So uh, for Microsoft, they have shot their self uh, they are showing themselves in the front line, making sure that they own Microsoft Windows. And the same can also be made for uh, companies like Apple and uh, Apple and Oracle who are owning Android and OIS, and that is only peculiar to them. So let's say in the technology, uh, how do you call it, uh, industry, that Microsoft found itself in terms of what? Coming out with um, product gadgets, and also applications to use. What are some of the measures they have to do to interrupt, to disrupt the market? They have, to, uh, they have to make sure that they are constantly changing the product line and introducing new similar ones so that people might not even copy. So that their competitors will not even be able to copy. So they are constantly changing their product line and introducing new similar ones. Anyhow, can you just come out with a, a new product and say that you are disrupting the, the market? How would that product be associated with, or how, how do we tame that? Okay, that so they, they, bring it, they, they bring in an improved product uh, on their, the one they were using before. So what about, whatever, new, whatever new product they bring is an improved version or a better version of what they were using before. So how do we term that? As a new product line. New product line. 
is innovation. Their innovation must be very unique. And in the uh, hyper-competitive market, technology and innovation is one hot, I mean, uh, enabler for you to use to be able to hot, disrupt, I mean, the market, okay? Can you name any other, I mean, uh, how company can disrupt its market leaders with strategy? What type of strategy can they put in place? Uh, so you mean aside the technology and innovation? Yes. Okay, fair. Uh, so just like um, with the, if you move to the pharmaceutical company with the Genentech drug, they can move to a different uh, drug, to a different area altogether, just like Rituxan Ritu did and move you know, to a new product. So they, they can also do that by moving to a new product, They're capturing a new market, complete new product. That's technology still an innovation. Okay, Doc, I come in. Yeah. Yes, another way is to create a high buyer pressures in terms of coming up with the technological innovations that um, brings pressure to buyers to compare price and then quality. Come again. I mean, creating buyer pressures, that means on... What do you mean by buyer pressure? Customers, whereby, yes, buyer pressure means whereby customers compare prices and then quality. So a customer will compare a, 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 at the same time in terms of quality. Hmm. You see, your problem is you are not speaking like a strategist. Do you get me? A customer changes or the clientele changes can be one of them. And this is normally used to say that here today, gone tomorrow. It's a me metaphor that is normally used in customer changes. That occurs in competitive, hyper-competitive market. Okay? I mean, it is something that you have to create and that technological innovation can also help you to do that so that you can change the taste of what your customer. That is another way of what changing the market by disrupting it by the term hyper-competitive. It looks as if most of you don't understand hyper-competitive that we talk about. You need to go back and go over it and understand because it will play a key role in your industry, wherever you are, or even the corporate entity that you belong. You have to understand. And Microsoft, as a hyper-competitive firm, need to utilize technological innovation, customer changes. Apart from even customer changes, they also have to look at decline of what? Boundaries, okay? And also their financial independence, which they have, so they can use that compared to other companies who have challenges with financial independence. If you want to be a dominant player in the market, remember we talk about resources and capabilities. Part of these resources is financial hot, independent. That can enable you to do any other thing to disrupt your competitors within the industry. So if you look at it, uh, Apple, Google, are rubbing shoulders very well. Look at Google, how they are coming out with their innovative art program. Even they are now using uh, electronic art vehicles. They move out from their main domain and move into another area where we call vertical and horizontal type of art strategy to disrupt Microsoft ways of art doing things. Okay, Amazon is doing the same thing. Amazon, all of them have cloud computing, but why is Amazon topping? You need to find out why. All these are some of the things you have to note of, okay? So your presentation should have, it was well captured, but you should have actually looked at the other aspects 
that needs to be done, like as I've told you, in terms of the hyper-competitive. And since yesterday, I've been talking about that, yesterday's presentation about how some of these things can be used to disrupt, uh, how do you call it, dominant players in the market. All right? So, I mean, um, with regards to your style of presentation, it's not bad. The only thing is how to you make a, raise the issues without explaining the strategies behind it for us to be able to move. Because you even make, uh, how do you call it, reference to, uh, how do you call it, uh, change uh, management, okay? What do you mean by that? You need to explain, you don't have to just mention it and just move ahead. So you need to take note of that. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Doc. Thank you, Doc. Is group 12 ready now? Yes, please. Yes, Doc. Project. Project. Please stop sharing your screen so that I can share my screen. Yeah, group 13, stop sharing. Yeah, group 12, you have 20 minutes to do your presentation. Start. OK, thank you. Please, I can't see the screen. Benji. Can you see the screen? Please, I'm coming. Your time is rolling. Yes. Hello, can you see my screen? Hello. Hello. Hello, can you see yeah, my screen? See okay. Please, please go ahead. Hello, Ruth. Hello. Hello. Hello? Hello, Ruth. Yeah. Please try and join now. Please try and join again now. Hello, Doc. Hello, Doc. I can hear you. Yes, please. Um, I think she had an internet issue. She had to log off. She's trying to join. So please admit her. She's not in. She's not in the waiting room. And this one does not even have a waiting room. Just you should just use the credentials that have been given, the pass ID and the pass system, and enter. There's nothing like a waiting room. Hello, Roots. Are you on the call? Hello? Oh. Hello, why are you able to join? Yeah. Hello? Hello? Yeah, why was the problem? 
Yes, I can hear you. What's the problem? Yeah, I can hear you. What's the problem? Are you able to join? Host is host is in another meeting. Oh. If you use the same link to join, use the same. If you link. use the same link to the join, because yes, the program yes. is going on. We are we are in the lecture room. I mean, how do you call it? Platform now. Yes, use the same link. The same link that has been on the page. Yeah. Three minutes is gone. Actually, four minutes. Hello. Hello, Doc. Uh, please. I can hear you. Mm -hmm. Yes. So um, she's having issues in trying to join. So Hello, I'm, I'm here. Okay. I okay. apologize, Doc. I apologize, class. Good evening, Doc. Good evening, class. This is group twelve. Hello. Go ahead. Go ahead. We can hear you. This is group twelve. I am Ruth, and I'm presenting with. Anthony, Benjamin, and Augustine. We are to evaluate and analyze the mode of strategic decision making by CEO at Levinson. First of all, we'd like to talk about case one, Genetech. Genetech is a pharmaceutical. Benji, please, the next slide. Okay. Can you see? Yes, yes. Genetech is a pharmaceutical and biotechnology company which was founded in the US in 1976 and they have their headquarters in San Francisco. It has over 13,600 employees. Please move on to the next slide. So Genetech made very good sales from 1976 to 2006 and increased their revenue to 9 billion and profit to 2 billion. However, the company's product reached maturity stage, hence the decline in growth. As just a few of their products were at the introductory and growth stages. This was approached with a strategy aimed at increasing their revenue to 11 billion and 13 billion in 2007 and 2008, respectively. I'd like to hand over to Benjamin to continue from here. Okay, so um, as of 2006, Genetech growth had come to a plateau, a standstill. So they needed to devise a strategy in order to increase their revenue and then also increase their profit. So um, by then, Arthur Livingston was the CEO of Genetech. So he Divide the strategy in order to increase their revenue, and uh, that was this. That's his um, his progress in the, in the company. By then, he was the CEO. So there are actually three roles, three strategic decision moves. There's an entrepreneur, there's adaptive, and there's planning, and then logical incre incrementalism. So with the entrepreneurial um, mode, the strategy is made by one powerful person in the company the CEO and that is a priority for the entire company and the risk is based on all of that. Example is Amazon and Apple. Amazon, Jeff Bezos, Apple, Steve Jobs who has been the CEO for a long period of time and then even Tesla, um, Elon Musk. So there's also the ad adaptive mode which is the reactionary approach. So basically depending on what is happening on the market and what's the um, threat and then the opportunities are there company usually reacts to what is happening on the market and actually make some decisions and then either disrupt their market, try to increase their market share and all of that. There's also the planning. The planning is usually um, 
a mix of the reactionary and then also precautionary. So we try to actually sit down and really plan and um, even foresee what is about to happen and you react to it. But there is a plan that is already um, that is already considered and then react to whatever is happening later on in the future, depending on what happens. And there's also logical incrementalism. This, there's a general consensus and a decision taking, then there's a vision and it's leads to plan emergence rather than sudden overhaul. So this one has a lot of um, iterations and overhauls, like from time to time, depending on whichever situation or whichever problem there is or the company is facing or where they want to um, take their operations to. Now with Genetech, um, Arthur Livingston used the adaptive approach, which is quite reactionary. And um, so the reason why Oh, yeah. I'm fine, thank you. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, so he used the adaptive approach, which is um, a reactionary approach, and he waited for um, the company to actually plateau in terms of revenue and then profit before they started acting. So he had to bargain with the board and things and all of that. So that was the adaptive approach that um, Ata Livingston used. But um, we would propose that at the Livingston would rather use logical incrementalism in his approach in um, strat making strategic decisions. The board or the leadership of the company will set the overall mission and the vision, and then the CEO would um, commission his employees and the entire organization to move in that particular direction. And the research will bring out some findings, and based on the findings, the process can also be um, iterated up until the time that the company is certain that we are moving in this direction. This actually helps companies to make very good strategies. Now, based on our um, strategic recommendation or what we realize, realize that we would advise after living to go in a strategic way by the following, by um, considering market penetration strategy. So what we would like to do, or I would like him to do, is to look at the prices of um, Genetech products and um, lower the prices while, so that they would penetrate so much into the market. And aside that, not considering, not forgetting about the margin, the gross margins, and then the profit margins on the, um, the product as well. You would also look at the acquisition strategy. For every business to um, grow, um, at a point in time, you would have to make some acquisitions. So we would advise that Genetech can do some acquisitions for um, some um, pharmaceutical and biotech company. Um, two major companies that we are considering is AstraZeneca and then Cartesian Therapeutics. There's also Amgen and then Inside Therapeutics. But um, the reason why we are considering AstraZeneca and then Cartesian Therapeutic is because of their current um, research into vaccines, immunotherapy, and COVID-19, and then genetics. Because of the current diseases and then the trend of um, diseases that are coming, COVID-19 and epigenetics, we believe that if we are able to acquire any of these, um, let's say, smaller therapeutic, smaller pharmaceutical or um, bio companies, we can um, make a very good strategy and then later on we would be able to make very good profits and revenue in the future. Aside that, we also want to develop projects and then develop products and so diversify our products so that we can expand our markets. So we we'll develop our products and then we we'll also expand our markets such so that we will increase um, our market to places like Africa, Southern Africa, and then even Asia. Yeah, so we develop a lot of products and um, we would um, also as advise at the Livingston to diversify the market. So I would leave the rest of the presentation for our other members, Augustine and then Anthony to continue. Okay, um, thank you, Benjamin. So the second um, case study had to do with analyzing a hyper-competitive firm which is Microsoft. And as we all know, a hyper-competitive firm is a firm that tries to bring up disruptive technology 
so that um, they can prevent their competitors from um, taking over the, the market for a long time. Now, Microsoft was <coughs> founded by Bill Gates and Paul Allen in 1975, and it's currently um, headed by Satla Nadella. And as we know, Microsoft is um, into software development, and of late, they've also ventured into some hardware provisions. In terms of financials, the current cash flow of uh, Microsoft, Benjamin, the next slide. The, the, yeah, on financials. The current cash flow of Microsoft is around 50 billion, revenue around 125 billion. Currently, operating income is around 30, 34 billion, with shareholders uh, payout since the existence, uh, currently around 30 billion. Next slide. Now, if you look at the core mandate of Microsoft over the period, you realize that um, they've brought up uh, cloud computing and they've migrated from more of retail-centered uh, computing to more of uh, business, enterprise business solutions. And one of the key business solutions which they brought on board, especially during the COVID, which took a um, lot of center stage, is their Microsoft Teams, which currently has uh, about 75 million users and also the Office 365, which presents cloud computing solutions, about 180,000, million users, with market capitalization currently around $1.57 trillion. Next slide. Now, we were asked to perform some SWOT analysis on Microsoft, that's to evaluate the strength, the weakness, the opportunities, and threats of Microsoft. And the preceding slides, we are going to go through um, each of them. One you have five them. minutes more, five minutes more to go. So in terms of strength, Microsoft is one of the leading cloud computing companies and also it has an extensive market reach. It also enjoys some very loyal customers over the period since its development in the mid 1980s. Strong market capitalization and a huge brand reputation from several brand service in the world. Next slide. Now in terms of weakness, Microsoft over the period has relied on the PC market and also has also been attacked by several uh, cyber crimes over the period, which has also reduced their user um, stake in the market. They also lack innovation, especially in terms of the hardware provisionings and also in the browser market and has also been tagged with several uh, bad acquisitions over the period. Now in terms of opportunities, they have huge opportunities with growth in cloud computing, especially with their flagship development of the Office 365. In terms of innovation and AI, they also doing some good work in, 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 that uh, in that sector, which they can expand. In terms of acquisition, despite bad failure and bad acquisitions done in the past in terms of Nokia and uh, Navision and all that, they could still make some learnings from this and also enjoy some uh, market share in that aspect. In terms of smartphone industry and also cost leadership, they could also improve this by making sure that their softwares are affordable and also cut down on the piracy level. Next slide. Now, key threats uh, Microsoft currently uh, um, is facing in terms of intense competition from Google and Apple, which they are currently uh, trailing them in terms of revenue, in terms of innovation, the preference of consumers are consistently changing, which you know that Microsoft is not really doing well in terms of the tablet and also other hardware offerings. Open source, Microsoft, is, uh, their solutions, are, it's a monolithic software and doesn't present any open source options. In terms of cyber crime and piracy, this has reduced people's confidence in, in the Microsoft product. I'll leave the next options for Anthony to continue. Okay, thank you very much, Augustine. Good evening, Doc. Good evening, class. I'm Anthony. I'll be presenting on how Microsoft can maintain market leadership. Microsoft can maintain market leadership through the various recommendations. Um, one, they, they must make it harder to imitate software as open source. Microsoft must create software which is harder to imitate on open source license. This will make their products more sought after and grow their revenue to maintain their market leader position. They can also partner with developers who make open source editions of their software to maintain control over the market. Um, they can also increase investment in artificial intelligence 
and machine learning. By so doing, Microsoft can also invest in research and development to take advantage of artificial intelligence and machine learning when it finally takes center stage in the world. They can easily set standards in the industry the same way they've done in the cloud computing market. They can also um, start smarter acquisitions. That's Microsoft needs to make smarter acquisitions and partnership in the coming years to maintain their position in the world. Innovation is not limited to companies with big research and developments and development budgets anymore. Therefore, Microsoft needs to capitalize on this with smart acquisitions and partnerships. They must also improve hardware offerings. That one too is a contributing factor to their maintaining leadership. Um, it can do so by entering the smartphone, tab and tablet and wearable markets. In as, in as much as they've done that with Nokia already, um, the brand is hardly challenged, uh, challenged by brands like Apple, Hawaii, and Samsung. Um, they can also create competitive advantage to compete with Google and Apple. Um, in the technology space, Microsoft faces stringent competition from Google and Apple. These companies are well diversified with softwares and hardware offerings. Microsoft would need to develop more competitive advantage to maintain their position or even do better. Um, they can also improve in cybersecurity. Microsoft also needs to improve on their security when it comes to their products. The company, to, um, the company is being hit by security issues often. Sometimes um, something must be done about it before similar companies start operating with similar services, but data security. And they also need to improve in diversity and inclusiveness at workplace. Um, by so doing, it must um, continue along the tangents to improve the best talent and grow the, the business ever more. They also need to improve on Kutana to work on hardware like Alexa for Amazon. Microsoft needs to improve on Kutana, its voice application, um, assistant application and allow it to function across multiple hardwares like Amazon has done with Alexa. This will open a different market, Microsoft. And last but not the least, they should also um, be transparent with how much data it collects from users. Um, people are more concerned about how much data, um, how much data they spend. So in this time, data protection is gaining ground. Group and two people of your are time concerned is about how much data, how much, Okay, the time is up. So, thank you very okay, much. Okay, thank you, class. Yeah. Uh, I even let you move ahead with even two minutes because I realized you had challenges when you were starting. So I even move ahead with two minutes' time. Now, class, any questions for them? Yeah, the group members, group 12. Hello, I didn't get, I didn't get your uh, strategic direction in terms of the decision that the company uh, Genetech was supposed to take. Can you expatiate on that? Okay, thank you, Doc. That they took, then the recommendation as well, the first question. Okay, so you mean um, the case one, case one. Okay, okay. So um, the um, Arthur Livingston or the uh, leadership of Genetech took a reactionary, um, they took a reactionary approach, which is the adaptive approach. So they waited for um, their sales to come to a standstill or growth to come to a standstill before they took a decision. Right. So at that point in time, it was quite, you know, it was quite late because majority of their products were in their maturity stage and then a small or very few of their products were at their introductory stage. And at that point in time, the market becomes saturated and there's less room for growth. That is the, um, the process or that is um, the, that's what was taken, the approach that was taken. But then we are suggesting that we, they should go with the logical incrementalism. 
which is quite attractive and um, always subject to change from time to time. So at every point in time, you look at your strategy and you iterate it, right? So based on that, we are considering a market penetration strategy such that there will be reduced prices, but then not forgetting also the gross margins and then the margins on the, the products for genetic. Aside that, there should be acquisition because as, the, as they were approaching 2006, they should have realized that um, their products are getting to the maturity stage. So they need to acquire other um, immuno, immune, 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 autoimmune companies like AstraZeneca, Cartesan, Amgen, Insights, and the, the likes. And uh, because um, do you mean they have to? I mean, buy companies or products? I don't, I'm not getting. No, I mean the acquisition, acquisition, as in acquiring product, um, acquiring pro, um, um, acquiring companies, smaller companies that they can work with that have taken the lead in research, in research in autoimmune and then other emerging diseases or other emerging areas. Have you so, determined the financial uh, independence of the company Genetech? Yes, yes, please, but not into detail. You think the strategy you are putting in place is a very prudent one? Or you are just saying something to like, because strategy is something that is not, I mean, you can propose without looking at it, I mean, risk factors. We call something risk factors within. That's what we call the contingency. You have to analyze the risks. That company that you said they are going to buy, what would be the benefit of it? All those yes. is, have you factored those things into being? Yes, yes. Are they yes. also willing to sell out their product, I mean, their company? Okay, thank you very much, doctor. So the, doc, so the reason why um, I'm saying that we should do that is because that's the reason why, that's why we are looking at the logical incrementalism, which is quite iterative. So you look at, okay, so we want to do acquisition. These are the companies we are looking at, AstraZeneca, Cartesian, Amgen, and Insights. Of all of them, which of them can we acquire? Which of them are, are in line with our corporate, or corporate strategy or our corporate goals? Then we can, take an iterative approach and then later um, conclude on one. Okay, so we'll be buying Amgen because of their, um, their value on the market, the research they are doing. And all of that. That's the reason why we have recommended the logical incrementative, as we've already said, and it's um, quite iterative. So it, this, these companies listed below are not like a final, um, uh, final companies we are saying that by all means, Genetech should purchase any of them or acquire any of them. So we would go through, we propose that our fellow team and the leadership team should go through this process where they'll be able to finalize on one. And at that point in time, it will be the best decision because they have considered all the um, logical incrementalism process. Mm, I see. With uh, Microsoft, with regards to the recommendation that um, I mean, you want to put across. Can you expatiate further? Mm -hmm. Hello, can you hear me? Hello, Anthony. Hello, Augustin. Are you there? Yeah, hello. Hello, Doc, please, what was your yeah. question again? I'm saying that, as far as further, uh, what recommendation you are putting across to Microsoft? Okay, Doc, so um, with a recommendation, I made mention of uh, making it harder to imitate open source to imitate software as open source. So um, with I that don't one, understand. Yeah, that's what I want you to explain. What do you mean by that? Yes, please. The, um, the doc, open so source, one, you know we have proprietary and open source. Microsoft is a proprietary company. Okay, Linus. Okay, 
open, I mean, uh, office and others are also open source. So what do you mean by it will be very difficult to imitate software? So, so um, Doc, I went further to explain that it must create software that is harder to imitate on open source license. So um, I was focusing on the license. This will make their product more sought after and grow their revenues to maintain their market leader. No, I don't understand what we are saying. Open source, how would you make this? Open source is open source. So what are you talking about? Um, uh, Doc, let me, let me answer your question. So there, there are two points in one here. Mm -hmm. so, the, so the first point is one, to make it harder to imitate their software in terms of people providing crack versions of it. That is one. And the second one is making their software open source. As you realize, as you just said, softwares like Linux has an open source community whereby people contribute to yeah. that community to expand yeah. the knowledge base and also include several offerings which comes at a free cost. So these are the two things we are, we are, we are proposing to Microsoft. Instead of they making it proprietary, they need to expand their knowledge base so that communities can spring up and also communicate, uh, uh, contribute to that community in, and also build up in terms of things like um, um, all the attacks they are having. If you look at open source communities, it's difficult for you to, even though those attacks come, people say Linux is susceptible to attacks. It's not as if you cannot attack them, but the number of community base where they have and they contribute knowledge to it, it makes it difficult for some of these attackers to, to get their software. So that's what we are proposing to Microsoft. <laughs> I see. Very interesting. Wow. So you are proposing that Microsoft should adopt some open source approaches to their their software. Software. Yeah. Wow. So if they really can, they can open it up a little, yes. If they can open it up a little for people to come in and also contribute to that. It, it's going to save them the piracy and the raping people continue to do and the crack versions of their software and all that. Mm. Interesting. <laughs> this strategy, uh, we, we need to interrogate it because what you are talking about, Microsoft is there for profit. These open source people, if you look at it, they are building community of users who contribute aspects microsoft strategy from day one and the iv mission is to make money hello, hello doc yes yes they are supposed to make money and now you are what? saying that they should adopt i mean uh, open source approach but, but hello, hello hello doc please what we mean is we are making it harder to imitate software as open source for so for example if you look at ios um, it's quite iOS difficult. is not open source. Yes, 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 Doc. Um, I know it is proprietary. So, um, specifically, yeah, I'm writing an example. It's, it's iOS is proprietary and it's quite difficult for anyone to really get to know their source code and even understand how um, it is developed and all that, right? So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Make Microsoft or Microsoft making it harder for open source soft, um, engineers and other software engineers difficult for them to be able to get access to their source code and try to make some changes and all of that. That's what we are trying to do because at the end of the day, like you said, Microsoft is in for profit, right? So we cannot make our trade secrets, av secrets available for everyone. So that is what we mean by making it harder to imitate software as open source, unlike Linux and the rest. That is usually on the market and open source where people can just um, make iterations or just change things on their um, so yes. are you t how about the the business model the revenue aspect of it how is microsoft going to uh make its revenue okay so for example like we said um for example and um, there's smarter acquisitions like um acquiring companies that are currently into ai and um um social media companies that are coming up for example tiktok and the rest and um aside that um so like I said, AI and machine learning and making smarter acquisitions, 
because some of these companies, when you when Microsoft acquires them, is going to help them in terms of future revenues. Um, aside that. Aside that, we can also improve cyber security, which is going to um, make sure that our customers do have confidence in our products. For example, like I said, iOS is quite secure, so customers are able to pay premium in order to acquire iPhones and then MacBooks and all that. But um, customers that are not um, security averse or they are not so much concerned about security or just buy Microsoft, but people would pay premium, and that is going to increase the revenue for Microsoft. So the other thing too is that um, we can also improve Kutana, like Alexa has did for Amazon, as in take make that as um, make that as something that is very 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 much important, or focus on that one, and then also improve diversity and inclusion at our workplace. Because, for example, um, in terms of revenue, now we've seen that a lot of people are buying things based on race and based on people not being diverse, right? For example, TikTok and some other um, software companies have been boycotted from India and from China because of how they are diverse they are not, right? So um, some race, a particular race can come against you and decide to boycott and not buy your product because you are not... Um, diversity, like you're not diverse in terms of um, how much people you employ, how much people you engage and all of that from different ethnic backgrounds and all of that. So we believe that this is something that will be able to increase the revenues of Microsoft. <laughs> Interesting. Anyway, time is fast, man. You, you, you are a bit confused with the whole thing about strategy. And uh, let me just give you a final example. You know, we have Modo, the Modo that you, you put your information on, the learning management system. It's an open source. Yes. You take the uh, source code and modify it. Blackboard is, uh, how do you call it, a company that has a proprietary for its learning management system. Very, very expensive. Not only that one, Canvas, Direct to Learn, Angel, among others. They are in for business. They are in for business. And uh, you realize that Microsoft is a hyper competitive company. And now you are now telling us that they should adopt open source strategy where they can make their products free of charge for the users. No, please. No, please. Uh, please, that's not what we are saying. We are making it harder for other harder. So What do you mean by harder if you make the thing open source? Do you know what is open source? You, people contribute to it. Before you use it, must be made free. That's what I'm talking about. If you no, want um, people to use it, uh, use it. You have to make it free. Moodle, you can just go and download it and then modify it according to your heart, your your, I mean, specification. That is how it works. That is why I'm saying that you don't understand the open source mechanism and that of proprietary mechanism. They are two separate. They are opposite direction. And they are open, open source people are not in the any competitive business. But these people yes, are in so the we are saying, business. Yes. So, so Doc, as we are saying, it's proprietary and we, we are making it harder so that open source software engineers will not get access to our source code. I said that will be if you need our um, software, you would come to us and pay premium for it. That is what we are saying. So we are not making it open source. We are we are strictly mm -hmm. proprietary, we are in for profit. I, I, I'm a bit confused. Time is fast spent. We need to move on because today we have to finish. But the only thing I can say is that your group is not organized. If, for example, when the lady went off, one of you who is part of the group should have started the whole process. You are waiting for the lady to come in. It means that you've not organized yourself very well to, I mean, uh, present. That is one major thing that went against you. Time is up. Group 14, can you share your, I mean, uh, your slide? Stop sharing so that group four, 14 will share. Hello, good evening. 
Yeah, good evening. You have 20 minutes to do your presentation. Go for it. Okay, thank you very much. Um, my name is Rosemont Osudia, and um, I'm a member of Group 14. Presenting here today um, is with me, Shanice Ajoakum Emisa, and then Peter Edu. Um, I'll start with the case study on the Genentech. Um, Genentech um, profile. The word Genentech actually comes from genetic engineering technology and was founded in January 1st, 1978. Um, it all started when Herbert Boyer, um, who is actually um, a, bio a, a, bio, a biochemist, yes, he's actually a biochemist, um, engineered a new scientific um, field called the recombinants of DNA technology. Then these um, recombinants, they actually take um, two different um, and DNAs, put them together and make them into a kind of a hybrid of which um, these DNAs now become susceptible to some of um, health conditions. When um, Robert Swanson, who is also an entrepreneur, realized that this is what has come um, in the market, he decided to invest into it. So he called on um, Herbert Boyer, and then after the discussion, they formed a team, and then that gave birth to Genentech um, coming into existence. Um, Genentech is basically a biotechnology company that discovers, um, develops, and then manufactures um, commercialized med medicines to treat patients. Currently, um, they are the first in US. They were actually the first um, company in US to be able to um, produce the human protein and the first to clone the human um, insulin using the recombinant DNA, as I explained earlier. And um, they were they are also the first to um, provide the antibodies that were also approved for the treatment of cancer in US. They also brought the first medicine to be approved with the FDA and through therapy designation. These are some of the products of um, Genentech. And we have the rutazen for um, hematology, that is any um, blood related diseases. And we have the avastin for the eye, that is oncology. We have the hepatitis for breast cancer. We have those for asthma, azolai. We have for anything, um, anytime there's a either kidney transplant, heart transplant, or anything. We have the cell set. That's a kind of um, drug that they're also giving to these people to help them. Now, um, back to the case study. Um, as Genentech was um, having their market price um, drop or their stock price drop in 2007, because uh, most of their products were and reaching maturity, and there were just a few ones that were also in the pipeline. They decided to take an opportunity um, with going into autoimmune um, diseases. And now, um, applying the Harry Mint spec and then the Queen's strategy decision making moves. We will now say that um, strategic decision making is a long term decision that is based on the goals and the visions of the organization. Normally, when you are confronted with challenges, on the product delivery or the market, you look at the market trends, and sometimes there need to be a strategic, um, strategic decision to be taken in order for the business to grow and also to sustain itself. But um, from um, Harry Maidsbeck and Queen, we have um, four types of strategic decision making modes. We have the entrepreneurial mode, which is mostly the CEO driven. With this type, um, the strategic decision is mostly taken by one powerful person within the company. Um, these decisions are mostly taken only to solve, uh, only for opportunities and not to really solve problem. And once it is one person who does it, the only interest is um, on the growth of the organization and not on, on the other factors as well. Now the adaptive mode, which is mostly the reactive um, type, you only focus on the current problems or the current challenges that the, um, the company is facing and then they take decisions to solve it and not actually aiming at um, taking new opportunities. Decisions that are also taken with the adaptive mode are disjointed because um, they, only, they are only fighting fires at every point in time and so they are not really linked. Um, we have the planning mode, which is proactive. This one, 
explores new opportunities whilst they're also dealing with the existing challenges or existing problems that will surface as the um, company runs this business. Um, they are mostly, time is taken to methodologically gather the right information to assess the current situation and then to be able to apply the right uh, method and the right um, resources to be able to overcome it. And then lastly, we have the logical incrementalism mode. And this one is a mix of all the three modes that was later added on. And this one um, combines entrepreneurial, adaptive, and then the planning modes. It is more interactive process and it also promotes a continuous learning. From the case study, um, we can deduce that the strategic decision mode that was used by um, Genentech was um, the planning mode because they were looking for new opportunities since most of their products were actually getting to maturity. So as they realized that people's interest have also gone in, into um, the cancer or the autoimmune, um, um, the autoimmune um, diseases, they now wanted to go into that one to be able to stay afloat or, keep, or get more products for their company. And then decision making was also collective and not only one person taking that decision. So currently they were having a challenge of uh, um, their product actually um, reaching maturity. That was a problem. But they were still also taking an opportunity going into um, the new taste of people and the new sicknesses that have come for them to be able to um, stay afloat in the business. Now, um, in order for us to be able to um, give a strategy or an advice to Genentech, we'll have to look at the strengths, the threats, the weaknesses and the opportunities of Genentech in order for us to take those decisions. Now, when we look at the, um, the strengths, we realize that they have a wide product port um, portfolio, um, which helps them to broaden their customer base and is made up of any products that will not do well and then the markets will be able to succeed with the new autoimmune drugs. So since most of them, most of the, they have a wide uh, product portfolio, some that do not do well, the ones that are doing well would actually make up for them. The second one is that they also have a very high um, IT system, which helps the management to be able to know the trends and what is happening, for them to even know that their drug was actually able to cure some people or subside their pain, and then they were able to go into that venture. And then um, they also have um, high product quality. Genentech, Genentech is actually well noted for their high product um, quality. Now the weakness is that the fear of failure, that is an organizational um, culture. The, the mentality that others who are even strong have fallen um, is something that it, it was really a bother. And it was a fear that um, what if we also go in and we also do not survive? That is actually a weakness. So the, the fear of the failure, because other companies have failed, didn't allow the staff to be more innovative enough to take the risk, despite the organization's decision even to launch the new product. And then the decision-making process is a bit slow because um, um, the, the CEO had to now go and get the, the, the board of directors involved and then have to urge them before the decision was actually taken. So that is also another weakness. Now we are looking at the threats. Now the threat is um, the direct and then the indirect competitors on the market. As we can see that the Novartis and Angem, who also influence the ability to increase and maintain their customer base, they are actually, um, they, they also take part of the, the, the people who are actually going to get their product. So these people act as a threat to them. And then the rise in inflation, that, that cannot also be controlled, is also a threat to the company. Now the opportunities they have, the changing customer needs, people now getting um, cancer and there, there being a need for an autoimmune um, drug gives them an opportunity to be able to go or drive into that area for them to improve their product. And then the development of new technologies, now, the, the, their, their core mandate is really to, to, to research into new products or into, um, into science to be able to come up with uh, new products to help solve 
um, people's ailments, as well as they even improving on their company. And then the emergence of um, e-commerce. Now, when you, 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 you have products, you can advertise them. There are so many ways of reaching out for people to know about you, and then you'll be able to sell your markets now. Now, the proposed um, mode that we want to recommend for Genentech is for them to practice the logical incrementalism mode, because that one is more practical. And then it gives us a better reaction to even the challenging situations that we we'll have. Um, it is able to also help us solve complex situations that we are confronted with. Then um, sometimes there is a need for a strong leader in the, in the company to be able to take a decision and then help to move the organization forward. Um, issues that are being handled there are also methodically planned out and then researched properly to be able to solve the current challenges. And then new opportunities are looked at to be able to um, go into it for the expansion of the business. And then it enhances continuous learning because in as much as you are even going into new opportunities, you are also improving on the old and existing products that you have. Now, um, the strategy, the, the role of the board of governors, uh, the board of directors, um, I would say that they were supportive. Yes, they collaborated with the CEO's decision and then helped to launch the, 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 the draft and then even to release the, the researchers to go into researching more. But they will have to be abreast more with the modern trends in the information technology because it looks like the, the CEO now has to inform them and then try and make them understand what is happening before he was able to get their buying and their blessings to be able to move on. And this one also um, delays decision-making process within the company. Now, the proposed strategy, we want to um, propose to Genentech, if they, they would, that they should employ more scientists for scientific research and to boost um, their, their research um, section. Because in as much as they are looking at new opportunities, they shouldn't also forget that there are other products that need to um, be researched more into so that um, they might not lose those ones as well. And so we have to beef up the scientists or the, their research team that they have. Then as we have the current um, COVID-19 uh, um, issue, and we, as we have still not been able to get a confirmed um, vaccine, once their strength is actually into research, they can go into trying to get um, the vaccine for COVID-19. Of course, um, whatever investment that is going to be needed, um, when these strategies work and we get um, the good benefits of it, it is going to pay off any amounts that probably has been invested and then there can even be more. So there should be an allocation for an amount of money into the purchases of ultra modern research equipment and then infrastructure to be able to revamp and then equip them better to be in the position to do a deeper research so that even where other people have failed, they would be able to come in and come in and do their best to be able to stay afloat. And then Within the teams, those who do very well, they should be acknowledged, they should be appraised on a yearly basis to be able to boost the morale of the people who also work there. Um, this time, I'll leave it for Shanice to continue with that of Microsoft. Good evening, colleagues. Good evening, Doc. Um, my name is Shanice Emisa, and I'll be taking you through the second case study, which was on Microsoft. Seven minutes more. Okay. Microsoft Corporation is an American technology company which is headquartered in Redmond, Washington. Their main focus is on inventing, manufacturing, and licensing goods and services relating to computing. It was founded in 1975 by Bill Gates and Paul Allen, who happen to be childhood friends. Um, move on to the next slide, please. So some of the Microsoft products are um, Microsoft, no, the previous one. Some of Microsoft products are MS-DOS, Windows 10, Microsoft Office, PowerPoint. Um, currently they have a Microsoft's New Edge Chromium browser and then Xbox 360. Um, next slide, please. So for the second case that you were asked to provide a SWOT analysis of Microsoft. And basically SWOT analysis gives a, is a strategic planning technique that helps a company to identify its strengths 
weaknesses, threats, and opportunities. So some of the strengths of Microsoft's uh, brand loyalty and reputation. Um, Microsoft has over the years been, has become a leading operating system and software provider um, with a strong loyal customer base. Also, it has strong distribution channels and has been able to maintain solid relationship with its uh, computer hardware manufacturers like Dell, Toshiba, and Samsung, and it has helped to improve its brand image. Then we have robust financial performance. Um, from 2008 to 2012, Microsoft experienced a growth in its revenue by 20% and it still holds more than 63 billion of cash and cash equivalent. Um, last but not the least, uh, there's ease of use of Microsoft's products. It's user-friendly. Moving on to the weaknesses, um, we have dependence on hardware manufacturers. Um, Microsoft works uh, mostly with uh, these hardware manufacturers to sell their products, and it's risky, especially if they find a cheaper alternative soft software provider. Then we have cyber crime theft. Um, there's been increasing cases that uh, Microsoft has had to deal with and has left it in a vulnerable state. Then we move on to the threats. Um, there's been intense competition in software products and companies like Apple and Google have become well-established uh, competitors for Microsoft in producing operating system in both PC and mobile markets. Then um, losing out or missing out on new markets. Although there's been efforts made uh, by Microsoft in 2013 to acquire Nokia, um, it did not go as planned. And so um, they've had to catch up uh, with the smartphone transition. Then move on to the opportunities. Um, there's, there's been uh, opportunities in cloud-based services that uh, Microsoft has become well equipped and they've come out with products such as um, Microsoft Vis uh, Visual Studio and MS Office 365, just to mention a few. And then lastly, mobile device industry. Um, there's been advanced growth in smartphones and tablets markets. And so um, Microsoft is encouraged to um, that delve into that market. So I'll hand over to Peter Edu to continue with the recommendations. Thank you. Three minutes more. Three minutes more. Hello, my name is Peter Edu. I'll take you through uh, the recommendation to uh, for Microsoft. One is to uh, Microsoft must embrace new development in the market. And then secondly, Microsoft needs to make use of innovative means of uh, 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 identify and implement measures that will enable it to keep its website updated and also maintain its presence online. Assemble new upper hand. Hello, Hello, Peter. I think, I think his network is bad. Um, let me pick from here. Um, okay. So um, Microsoft needs to assemble uh, more upper hand in order to be able to compete with um, its main rivals, which being um, Apple and then Google. Um, the company also um, needs to consider the options of um, acquiring and then merging with um, viable firms in the market in order to increase its um, market share. They need to reduce the cost of their products and then their licensing as well. Um, in order to ensure that issues of unlawful use of product frameworks are minimized. Um, we will look at the cyber security as their major concern in the digital market. Microsoft would have to ensure that it develops and implements measures that effectively addresses some of these uh, concerns. Uh, Microsoft uh, can also narrow its focus on coalition with new businesses. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, your recommendation looks very short and simple to me. Um, uh, without any 
major strategic uh, underpinning because they are very generic and very simplistic in terms of how it's supposed to be. Anyway, that is the first comment. Uh, with regards to genetic, you've done well by even trying to profile the type of drugs they manufacture and also the type of ailment or the diseases or the conditions they are there to, I mean, uh, control or alleviate. Uh, the only challenge... Uh, no, no, can I continue? No, no, no. We are done. We are done. So I'm giving my comment. My network went off. Yeah, I know. So your, your group members surveyed the situation. So that's OK. So um, and uh, the only thing is where you came up with your SWOT analysis. Can we look at your SWOT for genetic? Who is controlling the, yeah. Yeah, um, with this, what inform your SWOT analysis? That's the first question. Uh, sir, can you please explain a little further? What inform your SWOT analysis over here? What inform it, the entire SWOT analysis? Um, it was actually for us to be able to um, give the a strategic um, decision, a suggestion for a strategic decision. So if we would want to take a strategic decision, we'll have to um, assess their, their, their strengths, their weaknesses, their threats, and then the opportunities that they have available. So where do you derive this from? Do you understand the question? I'm not sure I do. Where do you derive this SWOT analysis from? From the case study and then the, 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 the profile of the company. From the case study and the profile mm -hmm. of the company. Yes, sir. Correct? Correct? Yes, sir. All right. So in other reading that you've done, with regards to their weaknesses, is that all that you came out with? Okay, let me, let me interrogate you. What did you derive from the organizational culture? What do you mean by organizational culture? With the organizational culture, and what we mean is that the mindset of the people, uh, as in they've all laid back because other companies have tried um, getting into the market with the autoimmune um, disease um, drug, but their side effects were even uh, more uncomfortable than the sickness itself. And so it made them a little bit scared or they felt a bit, uh, um, Scared to go into that venture until the doctor came in to come and confirm that their drug actually has been able to help other people relieve them of their of their ailments. That is when is, they actually got the, the is drug. Is the organizational drug. culture? Um, what are you explain now is the organizational culture. Uh, I, I'm I'm looking at it from the mindset of the people because nobody could actually come up to come and, uh, and confirm or nobody could stand by what they, ha they themselves they have, they have proven or they've been able to um, come up with. And so it was confirmed by someone else. Don't that you feel that their research and development unit was not apt in terms of what you just explained? Yes, sir. Um, I think I agree with you. Because if they had yeah. tried it, probably their research uh, and development been. unit is supposed to be an intelligence, uh, how do you call it, unit where they have to seek for information and make sure they improve upon their systems or their products. But that one is more into that. But so the, if you are mentioning organizational culture, I see it a very, I mean, uh, odd in terms of this uh, uh, 
as a weakness. It's rather the research, develop, research and development is not apt. It's not a proactive. It's rather what? I mean, reactive than proactive. Okay, sir. And if you say a long time for decision making, what do you mean by that? It's, it's because um, the CEO couldn't have his own way to take a decision. He had to now um, sit with the board to, for them to agree before um, they could even, um, they could give him the blessing for the launch of the product. So, so, if, so in that aspect, I don't want you to make any lending this thing. In that aspect, what type of strategy were they adopting? By means, um, back and queen, what type of strategy is that? Yes, we chose planning. Because mm -hmm. it was not it was not a, a CEO's decision or it was not a strong person's decision, but it's a board. A board mm -hmm. must all agree before. So we chose and planning. Mm -hmm. You chose planning. Yes, sir. Okay. So whilst you chose planning, what other additional recommendation or advice would you give to the CEO to be able yes, to so position we, himself? Yeah, we 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 um, uh, we suggested they practice the logical incrementalism mode rather than the planning. Because that one has um, the three of them, the adaptive, the planning, and then the entrepreneurial. Because if it gets to some point where um, decisions must be taken faster or quicker, um, one person can stand in and then be able to take that decision to move the, the company forward. Oh. And then it reacts okay. better, it, it reacts better and it is faster during the challenging situations and issues at hand. Okay. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Your group look more composed and well organized. And I'm, I was very happy when the other colleague yours was having it and he said that you want to take up. But only that, I mean, your recommendations that you provided was more generic, was not, I mean, uh, well thought of in terms of strategy. That is the only comment. But you compose yourself, the first case study you did very well in that area is the second case study that you couldn't be able to provide as advice and also as a hyper competitive company that we found Microsoft. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Can we now have group 15? Can you stop sharing and let's have group 15? Group 15, are you ready? Good evening, Doc. Good evening, go ahead. Yeah, ready. Yeah, go ahead. Yes, Doc. Good evening, Doc. Good evening, colleagues. I'm Hammond the Racing, Albert Sensen, and Millicent Ayin. As was indicated from our assessment, we were asked to identify the mood of strategic decision the CEO of Genetech adopted for their problem solution and also suggest effective analytical strategic mood decision that can help care the situation. Secondly, we were also asked to develop a SWOT analysis for Microsoft and provide them recommendations that can help the company grow and develop. So from literature, we realized that the background of Genetech is that it's one of the biotechnological companies which was founded in the year 1976 with the humble setup for the purpose of developing autoimmune drugs from clone protein and with approaches such as biotechnological, biochemical, and then technological input to help satisfy the health sector. We can boldly say that both biotechnological and pharmaceutical companies are seen as assets in camp in any variety. Hello. Hello. Where is it going? Where is it going? Hello. Go on. This is this is because these these sets of companies provide 
um, manufacture quality drugs. And for them, they, create, they tend to create avenues for generating employment, generating income, foreign exchange, and many other things a country needs to develop. So from our, from our case study, we realized that the CEO of Genetech had to take in measures because he realized from the processes of um, strategic charts and then the use of resource-based concepts, identify the problem, which is the maturity stage in their product development. And we all can attest to the fact that anytime a company arrives as a product, um, product development stage, specifically maturity stage, they go through a series of situations such as re um, loss or reduction reduces, not being able to meet the compensated market and many other situations. So the CEO of um, Genetic divides um, strategic management um, approach because it realizes that can help him keep the situation. These features of strategic management approach are the availability and allocation of resources, involvement of top management, objective orientation, future orientation, and then the influence of the environment. My colleague, Melissa, will take us to the approach in which the CEO adopted for this challenge and then I'll bet to also take us to the suggested effective analytical decision. Thank you, Eresi. Good evening, Doug. Good evening, colleagues. My name is Melissa Ntayin, and I'll be taking us through Henry Misbeck and Queen's decision, strategic decision making modes. We all agree that for a company to stay in business and excel amongst its competitors, regain revenue growth, and achieve its vision, goals, and mission. A strategic decision needs to be taken, and in doing this theoretically and practically, a mode needs to be adopted. So for Henry Misbeck and Queen's mode, we talk about the entrepreneurial mode, adaptive mode, planning and logical incrementalism mode. For the entrepreneurial mode, this is a, the prime focus of this mode is on opportunities and growth that a decision will best, taking minimal consideration on the problem and challenges it brings. Strategic decision of a company is made solely by the founder and like the name goes, entrepreneur, for a better choice of words, the owner or the CEO of the company, according to their mission and their vision. And for the adaptive mode, this mode is used when an organization decides to respond to an existing problem. When I say existing problem, it means that it has been lingering in the business environment without a lasting solution for a long time. Here, yeah, short-term strategy is set adversely to achieve a long-term strategy. It is also referred to as the modeling through process. We move to the logical incrementalism mode. This mode is an additional mode proposed by Queen and has the elements of the already two discussed mode and then the planning mode for which I would take us through after this. With this mode, management with a broader view of the future and considering the mission mission and goals again of the organization, chooses an interactive process and probing the future, learning and analyzing the environment to ascertain exactly what is changing in the environment and build a consensus with everyone on board, the involvement of both the top management and employees to, towards achieving a particular direction for the company. Plan, we move to the planning mode. For this mode, my colleagues and I are of the view that it was adapted by Genetic. We say this because with a strategic mode of decision-making, research is, is carried out to obtain appropriate information and analyze to deduce both proactive opportunities, that is new opportunities for new ideas, and then reactive solutions for existing problems. Also further probing into what is actually causing decline. In the case of Genetic, that was the decline in revenue growth is done. And when identified, systematic gathering of information takes place for a strategic decision to be taken. In relation to CEO at Levinson decision, he proposed that a company deploys third of its thousands researchers, that is the um, availability of resources, to gather and analyze information on the new drug for fighting autoimmune diseases. And based on the findings, 
strategic decision was taken for the production of retosan drugs, which was later approved to, to help the treatment in the autoimmune diseases. Having said this, we also believe that there are other analytical strategies that can help Genetech take a strategic decision. And that is what my colleague Albert will take us through. Thank you. Albert, you have the floor, please. Thank you very much, uh, Melissa, and good evening, doctor, and everyone. Uh, I'll walk you through the advice to the CEO. And with this one, the group came out for the CEO, Dr. Levinson, which will give the organization an advantage in the competitive market, evaluate implemented strategies. In this one, the organization should put in place systems that will welcome feedbacks to track back their laid down plans and also to know whether they are within or they are not deviating from their plans. This will help them to control and monitor their progression line. And it will also ensure that their laid down procedures and plans are well implemented and executed according to their objectives and their mission statement within the set out budget because if they spend beyond the budget, it will bring some bottleneck to their analysis. The next one is assess corporate governance. Well, this one, it gives way for the organization to assess their performance and the board of, their perform, the performance of the board of directors and other top management. This one, they should give a clear cut corporate structures, which should be in line with the organization's objectives and their mission statements. We realize in the case study that the CEO informed the board of directors about the new idea Yes, which the board of directors respected with their blessings. So if the structures weren't working, you could see that there, there will be um, frictions and difficulties in them. The next one is evaluate external environment. Realize that there were already two that is emerging and novices in which they were imagined to be the frontliners in the market. And there was already in the existence and autoimmune drugs, which were ineffective and having side effects. So what the organization can do is to take an opportune advantage and build, and build on by eliminating or mitigating the side effects of the autoimmune drugs in the market. I will now hand over to Eresi Hamon to continue. Hello, Eresi. Hello. Hello. Yes, you can continue. Yeah, Erase, you have the floor, please. Okay, so okay, so continuing from our next um, question, that was to develop a sort of analysis for Microsoft. We would realize that that would be questionable to everyone because we would know that it's one of the companies that have really grown over time. So from the literature, we realized that Microsoft came into existence from the development of two two friends, that is Bill Gates and then Paul Allen, to develop software. But with time, the, mo the main motive of this graduated into the development of hardware and then other advanced software. And this was to help as this to develop and then attain their mission and their vision. With our slot analysis incorporated into the Microsoft um, operationalization, we realized that with a little intake from the internal factors and external factors affecting Microsoft. We, when we suggest to them these particular factors, we have a feeling that they might take to look to it and then have a right input to help solve 
all other issues just to make them the premium technological companies in the world, just as they are, and then advance more scope so that they can have more competitors behind them who would struggle to look up to them and then struggle to be with them on the same level. So from our SWOT analysis, we realized that these are implemented measures which are analyzed from both internal and external factors that can help develop the organization and produce results that could call for growth. We all know that SWOT analysis is an abbreviation for strength, weakness, opportunities, and then threat. Then we know that the strengths and opportunities are of, are of the view that they are set to be pos um, positive factors in any organization, whereas the weaknesses and the threats are the negative factors. Also, the trends and the weaknesses are also seen as the internal factors of any organization. And then the opportunities and threats are also seen as the external factors of the organization. Fast track moving towards the strength. Realize that Microsoft had a lot of strength, but we as a group divided, decided to deliberate strictly on these three points, and that is product availability. Product availability in the sense that wherever you locate or wherever you find yourself, you have easy access to Microsoft's products, be it software or hardware. And then whatever products other than Apple, you can still get access to Microsoft's software. So it's it's more or less like a thumbs up for Microsoft's with their product availability states. Coming through to accessibility of features, that is that of the navigator and the magnifier, all kinds of human beings I would put in quotes can still access Microsoft with no hindrance. Since all these features are there to help each individual to get used to Microsoft and then build upon whatever they are set to get so implemented measures running through from Windows 7, 8 down to Windows 10. It's, it's, a, it's a strong confirmation that Microsoft has indeed kept in so much work to build upon their strong brand recognition aspect. To our weaknesses, we realized that Micro, uh, Microsoft had two distinct weaknesses, that is the poor product innovation and then cyber crime. Microsoft really has a lot of struggles when it comes to product innovation. Let's take the instance of Apple. Apple recently innovated the iPods and then Samsung also picked it up. Other, other technological companies are also picking it up. But for Microsoft, they tend to be a little bit relaxed when it comes to product innovation and also innovating of um, browsers. When it comes to cyber crimes, we can all say to that fact that Microsoft really, really, really slacks with cyber crime security. They have, would say in quotes, a, a weak system to check cyber crimes, especially with their softwares. When we come to opportunities, we realize that these are fields or sectors in which when an organization opens his or her eye to it, would begin to become great and develop more. So with a sense of innovation, if Microsoft should delve more into innovation, such as developing more products, be it softwares and hardware, Microsoft is then going to be on top of their game. Partnership. Microsoft once was in partnership. We can't tell if they are still in partnership with Nokia. And then during the transition of partnership, we realized both companies were really on the market, but we can't tell what really, really ensued between their partnership program and then all of a sudden the whole issue had to go down. So we yeah, advising Microsoft to revisit partnerships schemes and then work on it in order to help them grow as a company. Also, we talk about cost of reduction on applications. It is advisable that Microsoft delves well into cost reduction of application to help care priority issues and also prevent people from downloading crack versions of software. When we come to the trends of Microsoft, we realize in our current in our current era, so in as much as it's a threat, a platform more measures in order to be a pair with the competitive market. Other than that, if competition tends to strive harder, Microsoft will slack behind when it comes to development. Cyber insecurities and then that of bias preferences should also be a threat to Microsoft because bias preferences with time changes. So then it's lay behold Microsoft to develop 
hardware and software to fit the preferences of buyers, to make them the number one as they are and to take them to the apex. So point we elaborated on our so analysis. So from the statistics table, we realized that when it comes to Apple, when it comes to, when it comes to app count, Microsoft tends to be at a very low edge as compared to that of Apple and then This really attests to the fact that Microsoft ought to work upon their innovation skills. Help to lead the chat. Then we come to the brand up button. Microsoft tends to upgrade on all these sets, all the sets of Windows and it's Microsoft. Millicent. Okay, so I'll take it from here with the recommendations we put together as a group for Microsoft. So the next slide, please. For recommendation on a whole, we suggest to Microsoft to work on their weaknesses and threats and also improve on their strengths and take advantage of their opportunities. The next slide, please. You have two minutes more. Okay, Doug. The next slide, please. So the first recommendation we put together as a group was innovation. We suggest to Microsoft to bring up more innovative products that would help them to be on top. And also, we also put together as a group to take feedbacks from customers, employees, and partners also resolve their cyber crime issues and also encourage more engage more in partnership arrangements and programs we also recommend to microsoft to improve employee relationships and develop more branding opportunities and increase product and service availability they should also take into consideration in reducing cost on application and products so these are the few points we brought together as a group for the recommendation. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Um, any question from the class? Okay, can we flick back to your recommendation to Microsoft? The first one you mentioned is innovation, but I didn't see it on your slide. Doc, please, um, is the fifth point. Encourage more innovative pr products and services. Ah, okay, that's your fifth point. Okay. You say take feedback from customer employees and partners. What do you mean by that? Explain. Okay, so like a post service initiative. Microsoft, they, they should be able to take feedbacks from their users. In so Point doing, number five, encourage more innovation products and services. Eris, you have noted that already. Hello, Doc. Yeah, go ahead. Are you done? Yes, bring please. back the slide. We bring back the slide. I think the one sharing the slides has she has a little inter, um, internet challenge. All right. So you see, you are making a strategic recommendation to see you. Okay. The way you put it, the explanation is what we want to hear. Then will be able to follow it to the latter and say that, okay, this is what you mean by it. But you cannot put it there as generic and then leave it. This presentation. So I was expecting that when you pick it, you give us, I mean, explanatory, I mean, uh, aspect of it within the context in which we are making an argument. Okay. But you cannot just say that, take feedback from customers, employees, and then that's all. If you say resolve cyber crime issues, what do you mean by that? Mm 
Okay, Doug, please, what we meant by resolving cyber crime issues was for Microsoft to work on their system security to deter these cyber theft and crime. Since it is prone, to, it is very easy for people to crack into their system. Hold on, is it, with, is it Microsoft who is supposed to check I mean, uh, cyber crime issues. I don't get it. It may be very clear over there. Yes, please. We're suggesting that Microsoft, they work on their cyber crime issues, as in their system security should be that strong to deter all these cyber thefts. Since it is very easy for people to crack into their system. So the recommendation goes to Microsoft, please. To Microsoft. You see the way you put it is now because cyber crime is all over on the net within the cy cyber this thing the uh, wavelength. So if you say resolve cyber crime issues, it's very vague and it's not very I mean uh, specific to that of Microsoft. That is what I'm talking about. And you say improve internet browsers so more users can patronize. What do you mean by that? Not to you alone, to the group members. Hello. Hello, Doug. I'm asking question to the group members. So please, Doug, please the question again. You didn't hear what I said no, with regards I'm, to... I'm having network issues, so then my network is not stable. Okay, if your network is not stable, then you can answer the rest of the question. That's okay, group 16. Hello. Uh, hello. Yes. Uh, uh, Doc, I think uh, from where we are, our geographical location, the network is, is raining here in Takwa. So probably the question might be asked, but we didn't catch the drift of it. That is why she was asking if you can repeat the question again. Then she's having problems yeah. with the internet. So, I mean, let's move on to group 16. That's okay. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Group 16, go ahead. Group okay, 16. Evening, group 16 is here, sir. Good evening, class. Um, this is group 16, and um, uh, the group is made up of Sylvester, Gillian, and then Joy. Um, we are presenting on both cases, but I will look at the first case, and then my colleagues will look at the second. So with the first case on gin and take, I will... Uh, we will evaluate the decision that at Levinson made for the company. And then uh, we will also um, analyze a more, um, we will also um, propose a more analytic um, process of making strategic decision. So with the first um, case about Genentech, let's look at a brief introduction on the company. Genentech is a biotechnology company um, that was um, founded in 1976. And their main activity um, is to discover and develop medicines for people um, that are living with serious and life-threatening diseases. Now, in 2009, um, Genentech became a subsidiary of Roche Holden, which is also um, a pharmaceutical company. Now, the company was able to build revenue of about $9 billion and um, $2 billion in profits around 2006. Now, unfortunately, in 2007, um, their, so their, their sales growth um, slowed and the price stock declined. And so this led to the management of the company uh, making some strategic decisions to salvage the situation. And so it is this decision that we want to um, evaluate. Um, first of all, what is um, a strategic decision? Um, this is a decision that is basically concerned with the environment in which the firm operates. And it's also about the resources and the people who form the company. And um, 
is also a guide that determines the direction a company should take to ensure success in relation to their missions and visions. And also a strategic decision, um, um, strategic decisions are characterized by um, certain features which we want to look at. First of all, um, it must align with the company's um, short-term goals and the long-term objectives. And usually strategic decisions have long-term impacts on the company. And before a, a company makes strategic decisions, they must um, be able to clearly define their mission and then their vision as well. Um, a strategic decision, we, we are saying that a decision can be um, strategic when it is rare. Uh, in, in, in this case, it means that the decision is not usual and it has no uh, precedence. And also, the decision must be consequential, where you will have to commit uh, a lot of resources to make it work. And also, the people in the organization who are concerned are also supposed to show a high level of commitment in order to make it work. Um, again, the decision must be directive. And what it means is that um, it must require or um, 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 it must, it must um, pave the way for some other future um, decisions to be made. And it should also be a guide for future actions as well. Now, according to Mainsberg and Quinn, they propose four main modes of making strategic decisions. So, um, we want to evaluate those, those modes. Um, first of all, the en en entrepreneurial mode is where a powerful individual comes up with a strategy that is driven by his own vision for the company. And basically he, he, he finds an opportunity uh, that is available to the company and use bases his decision on that. And usually challenges that are associated with this approach are ignored. And the second one is the adaptive approach where decisions are made as reactive solution to an already existing problem. And this does not really involve um, the search of new opportunities, but it's solely to solve the problems that already exist in the company. The planning mode is also where useful data is obtained and analyzed critically to understand the situation at hand. And upon understanding the situation, several alternative strategies will be developed. And the most appropriate one um, that is reasonable and workable will be selected and um, implemented to address the challenge. And finally, with a logical incre incrementalism, this is actually one that um, was later proposed by Quinn. And according to that approach, um, it's an integration of all the other three that has already been mentioned. And it involves experimenting and learning from incremental um, commitments. So um, uh, looking at this, this, this approach, uh, we, want to, we want to see how Levinson uh, made his decision. Um, from the case, did he realize that um, his decision contained a little bit of uh, uh, um, some elements from all the other modes of decision making, but primarily the decision was in line with both entrepreneurial approach and then adaptive. It is in line with entrepreneurial because um, he made a decision as one person with power because he is the CEO of the company and he didn't really analyze the risk that is involved. He didn't really go through any analytical process, but he just uh, chanced on a report that was submitted by one British physician and he realized that there was an opportunity that the company could, could, could act upon. And so he just urged the board of directors or the company's board to, to support the decision instead of actually seeking their opinion. And, the, and, and that of the stakeholders as well. So the group um, um, is suggesting or is saying that Levinson's decision was primarily in, in, in line with um, the entrepreneurial approach and then the adaptive approach. Um, but we want to look at uh, um, a more analytical way of uh, making strategic decisions and then we will um, recommend say to Arthur Levinson. So first of all, in order to make um, a strategic decision, um, the organization should be able to evaluate their current performance. They should look at their returns on investments and their profitability as well. They should also review um, their mission, their objectives, their strategies, 
and the policies that govern the organization. Um, aside that, they should also review corporate governance. Um, the, the performance of the firm's um, board of directors and top, of, um, and top management matters a lot. Um, if you are able to um, review their performance, you will know um, their strengths and their weaknesses and as to um, whether or not they have an idea of what it takes to manage a company as big as that. Now, the next thing is to scan and assess the external environments. Now, the external environments are the factors and influences that impact the organization. So we are saying that in order to make a strategic decision, you should be able to assess such factors to be able to um, see whether there are opportunities or whether there are threats that the, the, the company needs to stay away from. And after assessing the external environment, the company should again assess the internal um, environments. The entire environment talks about the company's core competences and anything that makes up the, the company. It can be their revenue, it can be their, their customer relations, it can be their, their, the, the employees that they have in the, in the company. They should be able to assess their strengths and their weaknesses and all that to be able to make a strategic decision. And again, they should also perform um, a strategic analysis uh, to find out the areas that need improvement. Uh, if, you're able, if, if they are able to analyze the strategic um, factors, they will find the areas that, that, that are problematic and where um, um, those problems need to be addressed and how the problems can also be addressed. And after um, analyzing these strategic factors, they can go ahead and generate or develop um, alternative strategies, evaluate them, and then finally, um, after the evaluation of the, the decisions that's, that they develop, they should select the most appropriate one and then implement. So after implementation, then they can, they can, um, they can get feedbacks and, 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 and see how the implementation is doing as to whether it is helping the company or not. Then they will be able to advise um, which, which directions they need to take. Now, finally, uh, um, looking at this analytical process that we have just gone through, we want to advise the CEO, Arthur Levinson, um, to adopt the planning mode of strategic decision making. And our decision is based on the fact that um, from research, we realize that the planning mode is the one that actually takes into consideration all these um, steps that we have gone through, evaluating the current performance of the organization, reviewing corporate governance, scanning both external and internal environments, analyzing the strategic factors, and then generating and evaluating strategic decisions, selecting the best and implementing same. So our advice is to, uh, to, to the CEO is to adopt the planning mode of strategic decision making. And again, aside the advice, we also want to recommend to the CEO to make an all-inclusive decision. And uh, the reason for this is because he realized that from the case study, uh, he did not really consult anybody. He just relied on the reports that were submitted. Uh, from the British um, physician. So he just relied on that, saw an opportunity, and then decided to go with that opportunity without really consulting anybody or seeking the opinions and concerns of the board of directors and other stakeholders. So we want to advise the CEO to take an all-inclusive decision where all opinions and concerns of all top management and stakeholders are taken into consideration. Again, we want to um, recommend to the CEO, that um, they assess the company's core competence, their strengths and their weaknesses. By assessing their company's core competence, they will be able to tell where they fall short and will be able to put in strategies to, to, to build up the company in that direction. Again, we want to rec uh, recommend to the CEO to form strategic partnerships with some of the industry leaders. I mean, with the pharmaceutical industry, there are top leaders and we believe that there is a reason why they are, they are top players. So the, uh, the um, CEO at the Levinson can actually form strategic partnerships with some of these top um, industry players so that they will be able to join forces to develop the gray areas where there is little um, known about that. 
And then we also want to suggest to um, the CEO to invest more into research and development of drugs. Uh, uh, from the case study, they didn't really have to sit to get a report from the British physician before they could start researching. If the research team was proactive enough, if they had enough resources or if they had what it takes to do more research, I'm sure they would have been able to uh, see that opportunity and, and, and gone into that without necessarily waiting to get a report to act in that direction. So these are a few um, recommendations we want to make to the CEO. Now my colleagues, Gillian and Joy, will take us through the case too. Gillian, please take it over. Thank you. Hello, Sylvester. Gillian. Good evening, Doc. Yeah. Good evening, class. Hello. Please, yes, can you hear me? Yes. Go ahead, we can hear you. Thank you very much. Good evening, Doc. Good evening. Good evening, class. My name is Gillian Amwafo, and I'm presenting on the Microsoft, that's the case two. Please, let's go to the next slide. So a brief introduction about Microsoft. Uh, Microsoft is an it's the largest IT company in the world. It has products such as Microsoft Windows, Office, Internet Explorer, etc. It was formed or founded by Bill Gates and Paul Allen in 1970 and has since then been expanded its market share, its services operating system market. It has revenues to the tune of $125 billion and an income of $39.2 billion. In the year 20, 2011, it acquired Skype Technologies, which was $8.5 billion and also acquired LinkedIn for $26 $2 billion in 2016, which is the largest acquisition so far by the company. We would also want to look at um, the global presence of Microsoft. Microsoft has a global presence, which means it has, uh, it's present in about uh, 120 countries and has an employee number of about 160,000 workers and has so far met with about 240 companies since its establishment in 1975. We will look at the strength and the, we will conduct a SWOT analysis per the question of the Microsoft company. So looking at the strength, uh, Microsoft is a reputable brand. Um, according to Forbes, Microsoft is the seventh most reputable brand in the, in the world. And it has its operating software is being used by an, about 90% of PC software users globally. It is because of its user-friendly applications, it is able to um, stand the, the It is able to stand the competition against um, free office or my, uh, it's able to stand the competition against um, Linux and other uh, free application um, users. It also, um, it has motivated or skilled and motivated employees. The company has invested heavily in research and development of employees and new products. The companies and employees are constantly motivated to churn new ideas and, product and produce quality products. The company invested very heavily in um, the research of the the company invested heavily in research and development of the company in 2017 to the tune of one billion, $12 billion as compared to the previous year, which was 2016. Global presence. The global presence of Microsoft is one of its greatest strengths. It is 
in like I said before in the introduction, it is in about um, 120 countries presently, and it's used by 90% of all um, PC users. So with that one, you are able to know that Microsoft has a very, very strong global presence. It has done a lot of acquisitions and partnerships. And in the introduction, we said that um, it has 240, over 240 partner, partners and has acquired 240 um, companies in addition to its uh, portfolio. So with that one, we are able to know that that has helped the company to be able to stand. With the margin like um, LinkedIn, which generated about $26 billion, $26 billion. It's increased its, uh, its net flow, its cash flow. So we look at the weakness, the weakness of Microsoft. The weakness of Microsoft has to do with the use of mobile devices. A lot of people have moved away from the use of uh, desktop computers and laptops and are using mobile devices Gina, and you have uh, tablets. Two minutes more. Okay. Mobile devices and tablets. And Microsoft, when we look at Microsoft, we are able to know that Microsoft is very slow in innovations as compared to its uh, rivals such as Apple and um, other, other competi competitors in the industry. The, the use of hardware, Microsoft relies on hardware operators or hardware manufacturers in other industries to be able to um, put their soft applications onto. But if they can, so that is a weakness to them. The opportunities, they have the opportunity to diversify, to diversify the business. That is, they can move into other areas to be able to, they, are able, they can be able to move into other areas, such as emerging with other companies to be able to um, acquire new companies, which will help them to be able to expand their business. And cloud computing, also go, going into the hardware manufacturing well, is a place that they can use or it's an opportunity for them to go into hardware manufacturing to be able to expand their, their, their company. And um, threats. Competition. Um, Microsoft has very high competition. Um, IT's area is a very high and a competitive area. So they, they have to be able to, um, their, their, their major threat is a competition and security issues. They also have issues with um, security, being able to, um, the cyber crime rates and um, other people hacking into their systems is also a problem for them. And they also have an organizational cultural issue where they are, they are not able to blend very well with other majors and uh, companies they have acquired. So they are, they, their organizational culture may be different from other companies that they have acquired. And that is a very difficult one whenever they acquire such um, companies. So for that, uh, I would leave the rest of the presentation to Joy to continue. But your time is up. What are we going to do? I'll give you two minutes to wrap up. Can you please continue, Gillian? Joy, Joy is off, so please continue. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I didn't know that. Okay, so um, in regulating the piece, uh, in recommendations to Microsoft, um, we said in in our in our presentation in the in the SWOT analysis that one of the weaknesses of Microsoft is that they are not able to do their own manufacturing of PC market, so they have to be able to do their own manufacturing and regulate the PC market and improve their security system to be able to um, prevent people from intruding into their softwares. Then we, they have to also um, be innovative. 
you look at the, 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 their le level of innovation is quite slow as compared to their competitors and improve acquisitions. You realize that um, when they acquired Nokia in uh, 2006, um, it, it was an acquisition that um, they could not really um, put a hold on and it did not bring them so much profit. Most of the acquisitions have not yielded the necessary or the required profits that they need. So they need to improve upon their acquisitions. Then it, they have a lot of HR issues uh, as because of the number of employees that they are, they are, they are, they have worldwide. And because of the HR issues, uh, they, they have to improve upon their HR policies to be able to um, get the, 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 needed, the needed work from the, the employees and adapt to changing preferences of consumers. Like I said before, consumers now are adapting to um, the use of mobile devices. And so Microsoft will have to adapt to be able to use the um, move away a bit from the PC market and also delve into the and reduce prices. Their, their prices, uh, most of their products are, are, are priced. And because of that, they, 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 have, they have to move into the cost leadership uh, zone of um, you. They have to use the cost leadership um, system to be able to um, get into most of their. Um, okay, so we will go to the internet browser. So they have to update their internet browser to be able to um, compete with Mozilla, Chrome, and other internet browsers so that they can have access to advertisements in, 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 on the internet as well and continuous and effective marketing tools. So they have, um, they have to use continuous or effective marketing tools to be able to assess or get to um, their, their, their clients. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Gideon, what happened? Um, your presentation style, you've been going over one point over and over, over and over, especially when you were doing the SWOT analysis. That took a lot of time away from you. You know, when you are doing presentation, you pick item, you just expatiate briefly, go to the concrete issues, then move ahead. But I realize that uh, what we call it over elaboration and repetition as well, which did not augur well for your group. All right? So take okay, note sure. of that. And uh, the okay. first guy, uh, what's the name? Who did the first uh, aspect of the, the case? Sylvester, sir. Sylvester. Sylvester. Yeah, in your presentation, you did mention that uh, you wanted to do more analytical aspect of the of the case. Yes, That's sir. for aha. Uh -huh. Can you go back to that slide? Okay, sir. Is this what you're talking about, sir? Yeah, here. Yeah. In your explanation about evaluating the current performance results, uh, I remember you said about the financial um, position of the organization, looking at the, hot, the investment portfolio and other related issues. All right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So, and you also talk about the review. Are you making that recommendation to um, Genetic, or you are using it to build the case? Because um, I'm actually, I'm, I'm using this one to build the case. I'm suggesting that they evaluate their performances in respect to their investments and their profitability. So it's not really a suggestion, but um, as part of um, making a strategic decision, they should, first of all, evaluate their current um, performance uh, with regards to their investment 
and um, profitability. As, as a matter of fact, uh, it, it's not specifically to uh, Genentech. Any organization that would want to make um, analytical um, decisions would have mm -hmm. to evaluate um, their performance result with regards to these, these factors. Sir. What, what is it different from SWOT analysis? It may not be different. It's probably the same as SWOT analysis. Just that we didn't put it in that respect. We wanted to go this, this, this particular way. But of course, if they want to do SWOT analysis, uh, I'm, I'm sure these ones will fall in line with them as well, sir. Hmm. Because this is a strategy, do you understand what I'm saying? And if doing yes, that, sir. if you put it within the context of uh, SWOT analysis, definitely the financial aspect to come in. Okay, the okay, financial uh, strengths, the weaknesses. Remember, we talk about the adequate reporters aspect of um, resource and capability as one of the basis of establishing the organization uh, competitiveness. All right. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. yes, sir. So, in that aspect, I mean, uh, you need to put it within the context. Then you also made mention. Go to the next slide. This one, sir. Uh -huh. Yeah. What do you mean by scan assess the internal corporate environment? So um, the internal <clears throat> corporate environment, uh, basically the internal environment of an, of, of, of an organization uh, talks about the structures within the organization, uh, what's, what the company stands for. It can talk about their financial strength. It can talk about their employees. It can be their core competences, their values. It can be their customer relations or anything of that nature. So the structures within the, the, the organization is what um, I am referring to as the internal environment of the organization. So we are saying yeah. that they should be able to assess all those factors and determine their strengths and their weaknesses. And then- they Yeah, that's the SWOT. If you use the SWOT analysis, all this thing will play into it. And you'll be able okay, to- sir differentiate it even then you look at the pastor uh, to see the environment in which they are working the external okay. environment not only the okay. internal remember remember SWOT deals with the internal aspect of it and the external is the pastor and also when you are dealing with the internal your strength and the weaknesses then the threat and opportunities also look at it also interplay with that of the external to see how you can be able to position yourself to compete with other organizations that will be a threat and also what are the opportunities for you, for your growth and for your heart uh, to determine your competitiveness or carving a niche within the sector. Is that point okay, clear? Sir. So take note of that. Talk, that should have been the best way to do that so that everything will play because the way you are going, you went about it. I mean, you can see that you are talking about the core competency and what will make you to become, I mean, uh, in terms of carving a need for yourself, in terms of that core mm -hmm. competence is through the, I mean, the SWOT analysis that we talk. Okay, and also sir. by looking at Porter's five forces, which most of you have even forgotten entirely as one of the basis of what your, I mean, positioning of the organization, okay? Then okay, also, um, to Gillian, you made mention that um, uh, Microsoft did not make any inroads with their acquisitions. Are you sure of what you said? Are you being specific with you? You mentioned LinkedIn, but you know that LinkedIn, even LinkedIn have a premium version where you have to pay and you will be giving access to even a more, I mean, advanced form of, I mean, uh, features. And also when you talk about Skype, uh, now uh, Microsoft are built into what we call uh, Skype for business, where you have to pay. Apart from that, there are teams. Teams has also been given as a sort of a, uh, a platform where you can present information via, 
I mean virtual, virtual meetings like what we are doing now. Microsoft team is also another, if you subscribe to their 365 package, you'll be able to have access to all their features. Okay, so you cannot use the entire this thing and say that Microsoft have not make any inroads with the acquisition. They made a lot of, I mean, profit out of that. So, yes, um, these are some, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, I said that um, you look at Microsoft over the years, they've mm -hmm. had a lot of acquisitions, but um, a lot of them too did not yield any profitable returns. So you have to be specific. Like Nokia, for instance. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, I, I remember you made. Like yeah, I remember yeah. you made a uh, mention of Nokia. But in your final recommendation, you were lumping everything as if they were failure when it comes to acquisition. Okay, they 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 were able to okay, make so. a lot of inroads, even with their gaming. They were able to make a lot. The Xbox, they were able to make a lot of money. And the Xbox, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. So this way, okay. you should have singled them out and uh, make where they've done okay. payroll and where they are not doing well, you specify and come out with a strategy for them. That should have been the best approach, mm. all right? Okay, uh, so thank you, thank you very much. Okay. Is that the last group? Yes, sir, this is the last group. This is the last group, okay. Yes. Um, we've done almost all the presentation and we are ending today. Um, I don't know whether uh, I will check. It seems some of you did not send your presentation, the PowerPoint. It will also be part of the grading for me, for the presentation, okay? Some of you were able to do good presentation. Some of you just make a sweeping statement with regards to the strategies you have here and there. I've made specific comments to most of your presentation. It's a learning curve. This is not the only presentation you are going to do. Some of you have done some of them like HR, OBM HR. The Viva that you are going to do too, there's going to be a presentation. So the comment that I've given, the feedback that I've given to you, take note. And I was so surprised that for those who presented in the latter, I made mention of the, the font size, the font type and everything, but you still repeated the same thing. And I'm going to penalize you for that because you have the chance to get a comment. If I were you, I would be able to position my PowerPoint to be a very good one. Some of you use yes, infographics, but some of them are not legible. They are not readable. And I made mention about that when I was giving my feedback to you. But still, some of you who presented the latter part still made the same. It means that you've not taken any lesson out of the comment that I was giving. All right. So I want to thank you very much uh, for the presentation. We've ended it. The next one uh, assignment or assessment will be where you present the uh, course uh, work two where you have to present it through the turning team. And also the individual reflection, the 500 reflection is for group two, not group one. Sorry, not uh, coursework one, it's for coursework two. So the group leader will present on behalf of the group. And also individually, you all have to make sure that you present your reflection. And I made mention, let me go over the reflection again. It's things that have helped you in the group, it's a learning curve. What are the challenges? What are some of the new things you've learned as a group work? What are the recommendations you would like to provide? All these things will be individualistic and I'll read the comments and I'll award you the marks accordingly. So please take that one also serious. It's not anything you just do cut and paste and then you are, you are gone, no. It is a reflective, okay? What are the good side, what are the bad side and what is the way forward? And what is your contribution? What was your contribution to the group? Well, how did you manage the group? If you are a group leader, that is also one of the things you put across. I'll pause here for questions and answers. And if there's no question and answers, then we'll call it a night. And it's exactly nine o'clock. We can close the docket. Questions.
All right. It looks as if there's no question. Everything is done, Bill. Let me thank you once again. Hello. Um, yes. Yeah, no. um, good evening. Good Sorry. evening, Joe. Uh, yes. Uh, my question um, has to do with uh, not necessarily strategic management. It has to do with um, the thesis. The T Z seventeen EM and eighteen EM. I'll be glad if you can um, clarify for me. Some of you are doing MSc, some of you are MBA. Okay. So it is in a class. So check it very well. If you are doing MSc, any course called MSc, I'm okay. sure yours is about seventeen EKM. And those who are doing MBA are for eighteen EKM. Eighteen. 18. Yeah. Okay. So okay. It depends. Okay. Yeah. Or the okay. course you are doing. There's a difference between okay. the MSc and MBA. MBA are for people in the industry. Most of you are managers. Some of you are uh, team leaders. Some of you are supervisors in yeah. MBA program. But MSc, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be in the industry. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm grateful. Doc. You're welcome. Good. Hello, Doc. Yes. Doc. Yeah, go ahead. Who is online? At, um, the September cohort. Mm -hmm. um, hello, Doc. Yeah, go ahead. September 2020. Is it September hello. 19 or September 2020? Doc, we wanted to know when exactly. Yes. Which one? September 19. Uh huh. What is 19, Doc. Yeah, go ahead. Let us know when exactly we'll be doing it. Hello? Exactly, you'll be doing what? I didn't hear you. Um, Doc, we want us to know when exactly we'll be through with the whole program because some of the deferred students are asking of when exactly we'll be through with the whole program. I wanted to know when exactly will be. When you say the MSC whole program, are you talking about the thesis the also? Whole, the whole MSc MBA program. So, no, I'm as Don't I know, we have still have an assignment to submit on yeah, November. After so in November. You there, if you finish with the assignment, it's because of the COVID 19. Like, ideally, by now, you should be done with all the program. If you are done with your assignments and everything you are done. The next is the thesis that you are supposed to be defending in October. You'll be submitting it and defending in October. Then you should be ending your program. Hello, so, Doc. Yeah, yeah. Doc. Um, according to the timetable, Doc, please, can I ask my question? Go ahead. There are two people saying the uh, call. The other person couldn't finish their question. I don't yes, know whether she's she off. That's why I was asking if I can ask my. Yeah. Okay, Doc, please. Um... Uh, like, I wanted to ask another follow up question to her to understand her question very well. But if she's online, after you, she can come in again. Go ahead. Okay, Doc. Um, my question is, um, it's two questions. One is uh, about the uh, January 2020 cohort. I yeah. think the last time we did the, um, the discussion for the class rep, and then I was asking of our results, those we have done already, and you are sure that um, very soon they will publish some of them, but up till now, we've not had anything of which that. One, which one is that? We did institutional investment, our first yeah. one after- The results, the, have you checked it on the Moodle platform? No, please, but I asked Madam Joan and she said um, she will be publishing it very soon, but it has been a month ago. We went through the Coventry uh, board already, so all results are now available. Okay. So find out. So from you can her. check that on the model. Yeah, or, or call I can find Kofi, out from her. 
find out from she has to do the work she has to be consulted with the office at Accra. we've done the board now the okay. board ended last two weeks so okay. all results should okay. be available okay and my second question doc please uh And this one, I'm speaking on behalf of all Takradi students. Mm -hmm. Because the, um, what I've seen is, it's like Takradi students, we are always the last students to receive any information regarding graduate school. For example, um, I think January cohort 2020, and um, we were asked to submit our ethical submission. I think on the 11th of September, and then we got the mail on the 8th of September, and they were asking us to submit it on the 11th. But before that, um, I had a colleague who is a Takradi student, but um, sometimes goes to Accra for his lectures when we started the course from the beginning. So he sent me an email that he was asking me whether I've seen such a mail, and I said, no, I've not seen it. Not knowing Accra and other campuses have that mail long ago, but it came to us very late, and they were asking us to submit it. So because of that, um, we couldn't submit it on that 11th, and then we have consulted Madam Joan. She's yet to give us a feedback on whether they have um, extended the date for us or not. But up till now, we've not heard anything about her. Whenever I ask her, she will tell me she will be um, talking to, I think, Vera or Mavis or something. Yeah, you see, now, uh, she'll give me the feedback. Yeah, I've, we had a, a meeting with the leaders, the class reps, and I realized there's a big gap in communication at Takwari campus. So I've yes. already instru instructed my team in Accra. Vera, uh, Mavis, Vera is the head of that meeting. When it comes to delivery, Mavis, Mavis is proactive. Then Sandra is for research. So I've asked all of them to be sending direct message to all of you at the same time. So there shouldn't be any form of fault lapses when it comes to communication. Okay, Doc, please. So, so with this one that we couldn't submit our ethical submission on the 11th, is it going to affect us or? Submit what? it, we, we will give you a deadline, I mean like extension. Because okay. if you delay, it will delay your, I mean, uh, collection uh -huh. of data. That is, that, that is what we are concerned about at now. Because so if you, if, you, if you have that, if you have done it, please send it ASAP. Okay. Don't delay. Send it ASAP. That information and came look, to me. One thing, the, the, yeah. that mail that they sent, the email that we were asked to send, uh, send it to, it's not correct. So if you can resend it again to us. It's working then. now. By then they change email addresses to GCTU. It's working now. But if you send it. Okay. That's it, mainly to come. It's working. Okay, Doc. Thank you. You're welcome. It's working now. There shouldn't be any problem. Okay. Yeah. Any other question? All right. So let me thank you very much. If you have any personal issues, you can still get in touch with me. And we'll resolve okay. it. Thank you very much. And have a Thank good evening. Thank you, Doc. Yeah, good night. Thank you, Doc. Good night. Oh, good night. Bye-bye. Thank you very much, Doc. Bye. Good night. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.